Are you tired of digging up your septic tank every few years to have it pumped? Worse yet, are you sick of dealing with that big dead spot on your lawn that you just created? Well, so was I, so I built a septic lid cover with live, growing grass. Let's take a look and see how it did. But first, today's video is brought to you by Ford Insurance. Ford specializes in both commercial and personal insurance solutions, and with the cost of home and auto insurance going through the roof, now is a good time to talk with an expert at Ford to review your coverage and potentially save some money. Visit them today at FordInsurance.com. Okay, so a little background here. I bought my house in 2018 and the lawn was an absolute disaster. I mean, I spent a ton of time, effort, and money trying to make it look nice. So it was a huge kick in the balls when a year later I had to dig up my septic tank lids for the first pump and inspection. When it was time to fill that hole back in, I realized that this was going to be an endless cycle of frustration. You know, finding and digging up these lids every couple of years and dealing with a giant bear spot on an otherwise decent looking lawn. My father, who actually lives down the road, felt the same way when he built his house and decided to create a masonry lid for his tank. It's functional and it looks great, but on my property, the tank is really in a prominent position on the lawn and the landscape is graded over it as well, so a flat lid would kind of look funny. At first, I considered putting down fake turf. Then I realized in the spring and fall when my lawn is not a real deep green, the fake turf would just look utterly ridiculous. So I decided to have a go at a cover with live growing grass. The idea is fairly simple. Build a large, square, yet shallow planter of sorts, fill it with soil, and grow some grass. I decided to use composite decking for the material since it won't rot and it should hold up to the environment and the stress pretty well. I simply cut the slats to length and trimmed the height of the sides to align with the grade of the land and the idea here was to keep the sides just below the surface of the soil so I could easily find them. I used stainless steel fasteners to secure everything and also added some rope handles in the corners to have something to grab when trying to pull it up. So fast forward four years, it's time to pump the septic again, so how did it do? Well, it definitely wasn't perfect, but it did work. The first challenge was that the grass over the lid was typically the first to suffer in drought or even extreme heat. Now that's not a deal breaker, just something that required a little bit of extra attention and a little bit of extra water. Otherwise, it blended in nicely and it looks like I just buried the tank. The other thing I didn't consider was the volume of topsoil I ended up laying down in that area over the last few years. Initially, my lawn wasn't fully established, so I was top dressing it annually. The end result was another few inches of topsoil over the lid. This made those edges harder to find and actually increased the total weight, which we're going to see in just a minute. To locate the edges, I just used a marking flag to probe around the ground. I already had a good idea of where it was, but after locating and tracing out the cover, I cut out the perimeter, uncovered the rope handles, and tried to give them a tug. It was immediately obvious that the weight of this thing was going to be too much for one person and it would probably break it anyway. So on the plan B. I cut out and removed the sod. The one positive here is that the sod does have a, a definitive bottom because of the tray, so you can cut out the squares and manage them pretty easily. I did end up breaking off the ends when trying to pull the cover out while it still had soil in it, so some repairs were in order. But at the end of the day, the tank is ready to be pumped. The true test is going to be seeing how quickly this grass can recover once I put everything back in. One adjustment I did decide to make was to split the one large lid into two smaller sections. I did this for two reasons. First, as it was, the lid was entirely too heavy as a single piece. By splitting it into two smaller lids, I'm able to increase the strength of the structure and decrease its total weight. The second reason is I decided to install a filter in the outlet to my leach field to prevent any of the built up scum from draining out there. These filters typically need to be cleaned about every six months, which means I'll need to access the tank more frequently and I'd rather not pull up that whole thing every time. This way I can just access the lid that I need and not disturb the other side. So with that done, it's just a matter of putting in the lids, putting the sod back in and filling in the cracks with a little bit of topsoil. Now I did end up getting a little more aggressive with the turf than I had hoped, but the adjustments that I made should avoid that in the future. All things considered, I really am happy with the end result. And fast forward a few weeks, you can see the turf has survived and actually recovered quite well. So mission accomplished. So what's the verdict? Was it worth the effort or should I have just stuck with the old fashioned way? Well, I think in the end, this is really gonna come down to personal preference. Aside from my initial design flaws, the way it stands now, yes, I would wholeheartedly recommend this approach to maintain ease of access along with fast turf recovery. Especially if you're the type of person that cares what your lawn looks like, and if your tank is in a noticeable or prominent position, then this can be a pretty simple and inexpensive project. So while that does it for today, thanks for watching, and if you liked the video, you know what to do.